Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from DeltyIsGaming.com. Here with an in-depth Templar PvE healer build for the Elder Scrolls Online. Been about a year since I updated y'all with the latest and greatest in healing. This is going to cover everything. Skills, rotation, gear, passives, race, Mundusto, and so forth. Even if you're on a Templar, you may want to tune in because there's so much to explain with healing. There's so many flexible and contextual things you swap in and out depending on your group. You're doing dungeons, you're doing trials, you're doing pugs, you're super coordinated you're doing this you're doing that so it's not just a simple set and forget so this video i'm going to try to educate you and understanding why we do the things we do as a pve healer in the elder scrolls online so you can take this out in the wild and swap things in and out so you have the knowledge to make the decisions for yourself and be a competent templar healer or whatever else if you like this video please make sure to smash that thumbs up button consider come watch me on twitch.tv slash deltias gaming where i play and interact with you the community Community live. Let's talk about it in depth. Buckle up. Timestamps are below if you want to skip ahead because this is going to be a long one. Templar healer and healers in general. What do you need to know and why? So before I cover skills and everything, you need to conceptually understand what it is to be a PvE healer. In typical other MMOs, PvE healing is all just about healing. That's far, far, far from the truth in ESO. Healing is the basics of what you do. But what makes a really good PvE healer is having high uptime on buffs. The more damage resource added sets, buffs, rotations, skills, and everything that you can add, the better your team's going to do. The quicker the boss is going to die, the less mechanics you encounter. So believe it or not, maintaining a decent decent amount of heals per second is great thumbs up but maintaining a super high uptime what separates the average into the s tier healers is what your goal is so when we take account in this video you need to conceptually understand it's not just about spamming breath of life here and there it's about having high uptimes you need to know the mechanics of your build not somebody else so you can get the most uptime adding the most damage and resources to your group so let's start with the weapon choices and why. We have the restoration staff, no brainer. As you can see here, it's all essentially healing skills. Okay, tell me something I don't know. Number one is you get major mending off of ripping off a fully charged heavy attack with essence strain. Number two is your fully charged heavy attacks restore 30% more magic. And number three is you can combine that with an off balance if someone's using a resto and then get more resources, bang, ripping off a fully charged heavy attack. So in essence, you can get major mending on demand and you can get a lot more magic back on your resto. Ironically though, a lot of gear sets that we're gonna be using as a PVE healer are gonna want us to do fully charged heavy attacks on destruction staff bar. But just realize you're out of gas, you don't know what to do, get to your resto. The passives tell you to do this to get the most out of your magic recovery. Number two, destruction staff. There's a lot to explain here. Essentially, there's three choices. I'm gonna go in order. Ice is the preferred, fire is the second, and lightning is the third. Why are these in this order? Primarily, they're in this order due to the status effects that each of the staffs do. Number one being ice and the chilled and or brittle status effect. We go over here and we look at status effects. This is in the game menu. Frost, instant damage, applies minor main for four seconds. While wielding a frost staff, applies minor brittle for four seconds, increasing the critical damage done to the target. Now, it's easier for the wardens to keep a minor brittle and have higher uptime on this, but it's not impossible for a Templar. Minor brittle adds a ton of damage. For a fire staff, you're gonna get burning. But this is going to add a lot of damage over time to your individual target or in an AOE. And then we have Lightning Staff. Lightning Staff is the one that I typically like running. And the reason why the Lightning Staff works is it sets enemies off balance. We talked about off balance a little bit earlier. You see this? Off balance, you can rip it off. Another advantage of this staff is you can fully charge heavy attack and just look all over the place. And it's so much easier to land a fully charged heavy attack. With a fire staff, you have to rip it off and just pray to Talos that it goes to the right target. So let's do a demonstration. So I staff on my front bar, fully charge, and then bang. Kind of have to aim it where that little reticle is, right? Back over here, lightning staff, don't have to aim it. Just as soon as you start channeling, it starts working. Much, 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 much beginner friendly. It's a lot easier to get resources off, but it's not considered meta. Another advantage of the eye staff is when you block, you get mitigation comparable to sword and shield. So having on your pack bar blocking is very advantageous. 
Not to mention when you use the blockade skill, if you're going to use that, it's going to give damage shield and cause immobilizations, where blockade of fire is going to do a lot of damage. And then storm is going to set enemies off balance. So this is overly complex and I'm not explaining it very well. I would start with an ice staff is looking at the best in slot. Fire right in between. And then lightning is a lot easier to rip off fully charge heavy attacks, sustain and setting off balance. Something you need to know also as a PVE healer is we're going to get the champion points a little bit later. But they added a, a, a slottable here called exploiter. This used to be in the old champion point system. Well, people aren't using it anymore. The reason why is off balance is right around seven seconds or something like that, maybe seven or 10, depending. And it's gonna have a huge cooldown of 15 seconds. So you're not gonna have 100% uptime with off balance. Otherwise, everyone would take this. The old system, it was passive, meaning mandatory lightning staffs on everyone. And this is the reason why on all of your healers, but not anymore. It's laudable, you can't keep 100% uptime, it's not reliable, single target or in an AoE. So that's why Lightning Staff isn't considered best in slot anymore. So I hope that makes sense as to why. Okay, now we spent an hour going over uh, the basics of the weapon, but it's really important so you understand. And basically the way I have my set bar set up is almost identical on pretty much every healer, plus or minus Templar skills. So we'll work left to right, talk about them. Number one, Radiant Regeneration. This is your heal over time, 10 seconds, three allies. You can spam this to kind of put some heals over time on a bunch of different allies at last 10 seconds and consider this a very, very good heal over time that you can pre-buff. So you can cast it before combat goes. You should have a ritual before combat of getting this up. The reason why is when you engage in combat, you're gonna want your heals over time to proc your spell power cure set, giving high uptime to that. And you might as well get the hots rolling early on. Illustrious Healing. So this right here is the old school healing springs. You put it, down 12 second duration it's going to heal every second you don't need to recast it like you used to have to do in the elder scrolls online so consider it kind of like a, a hunt but it's not mobile at all ideally i put this right at the tank the edge of the tank wherever they're standing and try to get the rest so if this little crab here is a tank i'd put it right there and the reason why is in typical pve the tank should be the opposite side of the boss so the tank should be essentially right here your DPS should be kind of in melee range on top of it, and the healer should be in like a diamond formation, if you will. All spamming their heals, keeping the heals over time, keeping that springs, if you could, on the tank and the rest of the group. I'll explain a little bit why later, but consider the diamond formation very, very important for you to know. So we have these two essentially heals over time, one mobile, one not so mobile, and then we have combat prayer. It gives you minor berserk and minor resolve. I consider this DPS dust. It is actually a better burst heal in some situations for PVE than Breath of Life because Breath of Life, which we'll touch on a little bit later, only gets a couple targets. This gets everyone. Going back to our diamond formation, heal over time, heal over time, DPS thus. Strike down your staff and it goes right through, right? So you want to be able to hit as many people as possible and get as high as uptime as possible. So now the uptime on this uh, is 10 seconds. So consider this your priority because it adds so much DPS to your group. Even if people are wearing Kinras, they don't have 100% uptime on it. It's fantastic. And now we're going to have a long-winded talk about energy orbs and why it's so important. But there's a couple ways to get resources back and synergies, right? So we have a, a specific one for the Templar called Luminous Shard. Love Lumi Shards. The reason uh, I don't necessarily always use Luminous Shards is because it's pretty specific to tanks. Like I can chuck it, right? I can put it at my feet. I can throw it 28 meters. So it's really nice and it gives a unique resource back of magic and stamina, not one or the other, whatever's highest. The issue here with energy orbs is it does so much for us. It heals as it travels. You can pop these synergy to explode and you get either magic or stamina, whatever's highest. If you don't know, synergies are incredibly important in endgame PvE due to this undaunted command passa. Activating synergy, 4% of your max health, stamina, and magic. So the more synergies that you can provide, the better sustained your group is. The better sustained your group is, the more damage producing sets that they can run. This is a reason why you want a lot of synergies and why almost every healer runs energy orb because multiple people can activate it and it goes through the group and it heals like an absolute missile. It's also 10 seconds. So you can see pretty much here, right? 10 seconds, 12 seconds, 10, 10. Now we have a uh, breath of life. So I don't necessarily just sit here and spam breath of life. If you have three to four hots rolling on your group, your heals per second should be so high that the only reason you would need to use breath of life 
is that your tank got a big, huge AoE damage or something. They missed a heavy attack or something like that, and they're not one shot, but they're about dead. That's an instance where you'd spam Breath of Life. Or if all your hots are rolling and you get in a critical moment and you're playing with the Warden, who's pretty much all heals per second, you'd spam Breath of Life. Very rarely do I sit there and just chuck on Breath of Life and pray to God that everyone survives. Because if you're going through your rotation properly, your heals per second should carry the survivability of your team, not breath spamming. In a dungeon, this is really useful. It doesn't require an aim. That's the reason Breath of Life is so spectacular. I can just sit here and go bang. It's going to go to whoever. Then 28 meters in a circle, right? That's why it's such a new player friendly ability is that auto cast. You don't have to aim it, set and forget. Very useful in dungeons, not as useful in trials when there's 12 players. So now we have some options for ultimates to run. So Alliance War, this is actually by far the best reviving barrier for defensive ultimate. Simply slotting it, if you have your PvP maxed out, gives you increased magic recovery by 10%. Yes, I know people can't stand PvP and get this maxed out, but if it's your main character, consider getting this, consider taking this more. It's a massive amount of ultimate, but it lasts 30 seconds. It gets a huge damage shield, and it heals over time. It's your O crap moment. Don't know a new dungeon? Spam a bunch of barriers. You can get through almost anything as long as it's not a heavy attack, one-shot mechanic using barrier. You're a brand new player, can't stand PvP. I would just throw on Remembrance. It's not mobile at all. You can't move. But as long as you're not like in a one-shot mechanic, it's just going to heal everyone. Incredible. And plus it gives major protection. Let's say you got that. And one that I use frequently in dungeons when I don't know mechanics is Life Giver. It's not meta strat for PvE, but it's mobile. So you cast this and it casts do 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 all three of these right here all at once radiating combat prayer and steadfast war which means you need to level these up max them out and have a morph especially if you're going to use life giver it's an oh crap low cost ultimate that's mobile especially if you're blowing through your magic great alternative reviving barrier so that's our front bar. How this would look is pre-combat I started to get everything started to rock and roll and I hang back by the group. I chuck where we're going to go. I do a DPS dive. I'm light attack weaving just because I can't turn it off. And then as soon as we pull up to the group, I'm hitting this. So then again, it's 10 seconds pre-buff. Put my circle down where we're going. Combat prayer or bar swap. So those heals are rolling. Now when I get to this bar, I got probably about four or five seconds, aka three, four or five global cooldowns before I get back to my front. And guess what we're going to apply on our front? Combat prayer because it increases the DPS. We're going to throw an orb. Heal over time. Circle. Okay. So pre-buff. Combat prayer, orb, circle, bar swap. Now let's talk about Bartuzzi. So I have a lightning staff on. I'm in my dungeon uh, PVE setup, so I'm not going to go through that just quite yet. And you have the foundation of what the temp bar is used, and that's channeled focus. So channeled focus gives you resistances. It heals you while you're inside the room, but also gives you magic recovery, whether you're not in the rune or not. It doesn't really matter. It's very, very useful. And you also get a bunch of different juicy passives with this. So one specifically is... Minor mending up to four seconds after leaving the rune or while you're standing in it. So channel focus is like building your house. Magic recovery resistances. Extended ritual is going to give another synergy. It's going to do really good heals over time. And you can cleanse harmful effects and your allies can cleanse harmful effects. It lasts 24 seconds and channel focus lasts 25. So I put it left to right kind of easy for me to remember uh, what lasts the longest. So kind of my pre-buff rituals as we go to this, well, this doesn't require a target and you can kind of build your house and then start your heals over time. You'll start building it back here. And those are the two that you go with. Now, um, the next ability up is something you really got to understand for a Templar and PvE healing. That's what you bring to a group. What the Templar brings to the group is this right here, Illuminate. Casting a Dawn's Wrath ability grants minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage. So you need to build in a Dawn's Wrath ability. What's logical for me typically in doing trials is purifying light. Six seconds, it soaks up damage like a balloon, which you're not really worried about. And it does do some healing at the ground of where it explodes. So it's nice because it's going to heal the tank for a decent amount. But really, you're not applying it to multiple critters. You're just applying it once every 20 seconds to kind of maintain this for the entire part. So as you can see, what we're going over, we're maintaining a lot of buffs for the entire party. Purifying Light's going to ramp up everyone's spell damage, right, by using it every 20 seconds. We're doing Combat Prayer every 10 seconds for Minor Berserk. We're going to get everyone's synergy and resources back every 10 seconds with this. And then these two heals over time increase the damage because of our gear sets. 
but we're not done yet. Let's go to the other two, and these are the flexible ones on my back bar that I flex in and out constantly. So we have a, a really good trials and arena ability here, overflowing altar. Sometimes your tank's gonna run this, so it might be a little bit redundant, but it's gonna give minor lifesteal. So um, lifesteal to enemies in the area, healing you and your allies when you're getting damage. It's absolutely incredible amount of healing, especially when you're taking high pressure AOE fights, like especially the latest trial. And guess what? It can do a synergy as well. So that will top off everyone's resources. The synergy does a big, huge burst heal. It does cost health, but that's pretty easy when you have so much heals per second, your, your health bar doesn't even notice a drop. Mainly, you're going to put it in situations like a trial where you're doing a very long fight, and then you're going to go do mechanics, come back, and then set it down. Mainly, you're using it for that minor lifesteal, the heals per second, and the synergy. So high mobility dungeon fights, what I swap in here is luminous shards. Again, energy orbs will do really well, but if we're doing like coral airy hard mode and the tank's 30 meters off, I'll just kind of run in close chuck a spear and then chuck an orb basically for the dps but that's a useful flex spot there also another flex spot is echoing vigor we're going to touch on this a little bit later but this is a good skill it's an aoe heal it costs stamina and it's very nice because it actually uh procs a really useful set called powerful assault a lot of tanks aren't running powerful assault anymore because they're so far away from the group typically that no one really gets the buff so putting it in my four key if i'm not going to use the altar and keep it up as high as i can is really good Caltrops, believe it or not, you can also use instead of Echoing Bigger. They're the same exact cost, but Caltrops does a lot of damage. And you get it morphed to Razor Caltrops, you're going to get Major Breach as well. So that's another flex option for this skill. So let's just consume that you're going to do trials in a lot of arenas and some dungeons with not mobility. So I'll keep that on. Now we have our back bar. I'm using a Master's Architect dungeon set. So it looks like a lightning. One of the skills I constantly slot here is Elemental Blockade. You can swap this in and out depending on the situation, but it just adds a lot of DPS. It procs different status effects that are useful for you. And it's something else to maintain your bar with a 14 second duration. Adds a little bit of damage and or status effects. Um, Something else that to note with this is your back bar in Jim. If you charge it, let's say I have a shock and I want to apply minor vulnerability for running dungeons and so forth. If I hit it and then I bar swap, you'll see it reapplies it in the top there. One, two, bang, zero. And it reapplies it. So you can use an infused, which I'll pull up my Roaring Opportunist one, Destruction Staff. So I have infused weapon and spell damage. So it's a way to get your enchant from your back bar, whether you want charge and shock for doing like dungeons, or you want big, huge weapon and spell damage for doing even more healing. You can actually keep that up by using that wall of elements and continuing to bar swap along with getting the status effects it provides. All right, let's, let's do blockade with the flame staff. So bottom middle of my screen, you can see the Berserker enchant one and it's about to go out and bang reprox and two, it's about to go out and reprox. So I'm keeping a hundred percent uptime on my infuse uh, enchant right there. And it's going to give me big, huge healing. So again, in case this doesn't make sense, we do that in a bar swap and just to prove it's not a hack or anything. See this Berserker spell damage will ramp up through the ceiling. And it just keeps reapplying with those ticks along with the status effects. That's why you do that. Okay, now some flex bots, depending on your group composition and what you're doing. Um, and so like Elemental Drain, uh, Minor Magic Steel, that's pretty easy to get and you get Major Breach as well. Elemental Drain can be run by the tanks or you as a healer. Um, it's, it's pretty niche and some people can run it depending on what tanks are running. Just know that's a thing. Crushing Shock is actually worth running a lot of times in dungeons because there's so many interrupt mechanics. Coral Airy, Dread Cellar, so I'll swap out that for this. Pulsar is actually not bad. Uh, as well especially in smaller groups because it can proc some uh, interesting status effects specifically minor mangle and decreasing max health so for trash bowls you can slot it there and just jump in the mix but consider this a flex spot you don't necessarily need to run a dust row staff but there's so many useful abilities in the destruction staff tree it's worth running something this is your flex spot on your back bar now ultimates of choice so aggressive warhorn again another pvp ultimate but what this does is gives major force increasing your crit damage by 20 percent for 10 seconds and also increases max stat for uh, 10 percent for 30 seconds so you're kind of rotating aggressive warhorns throughout the tank and or healers 
something to note is aggressive warhorn gives major force major force is a key buff that you want to rotate you can get this from sax heals champion and a lot of people run sax heals champion and another um ultimate like barrier in really hard fights you can get a massive amount of major force or uh ro uh, jorables we'll talk about that a little bit later but there's a way to extend it so a really helpful add-on to see if people have this up so you don't cast a Warhorn on top of a Warhorn as Hordo's Reflex. This is very useful or Code's Combat Alerts. It'll be up in the top left and it'll give you a timer counting down both the increase to max stats and the increase to uh, aggressive Warhorn Major Force. And then you try to cycle that and keep as high uptime as possible. Now, if you're a new Templar, you don't know what the heck to do, you can't stand PvP. The only really damage uh, added thing you could really do is Solar Prism. This is really nice in PvP, drops a huge nuke down, major main, which isn't that relevant, but it does a little bit of damage and people can activate the grab crush synergy. So that's a beginner set that you can run, or you can even do a destruction staff ultimate to do a little bit of damage. But your main goal is to add so much damage to your party that any damage you would add is outweighed by the utility in the group that you can have. So think about it this way. Yeah, you could do an ultimate or use of sweeps or use a beam or something like that to do a little bit of DPS. Let's say your healer does 20,000. But if you're entirely focused on buffing your team and doing all of this, maybe your entire group DPS for everyone goes up 10,000 out of 8 DPS. Well, that's 80,000, not necessarily good at math. So that's way more value to your team than sitting and trying to do a little bit of DPS. That's why the healers focus on what they're good at, providing buffs, providing synergies, resource sustain, and big, huge deeps through the gear sets versus just doing a couple puncturing sweeps here and there. Okay, so we got that down. About a 45 minute video already. Let's talk about the rotation. So we'll start in the back bar here. I'm gonna use a spell power potion. And what I'm gonna do, as soon as the tank pulls, so we're gonna get everything locked and loaded here. So the tank pulls, I'm gonna go on my back bar, and the first thing I'm gonna do is light attack, purify, and light to get the 10% spell damage. I'm gonna pull up here to where the group is, and usually at the tail end, do a blockade. And then I'm gonna put my overflow altar down, I'm gonna bar swap, okay? So now we got the altar down for 30 seconds, we got 20 seconds of spell damage, and then usually these buffs are down. So the first one I'm gonna do, combat prayer, minor berserk, synergy for resource sustain, one or two heals, bar swap. Guess what needs to be reapplied? Purifying light, this, let's rebuild our house, and let's go a little bit quicker here. So this is kind of what it's gonna look like. One, two, and we're gonna hit a warhorn, purifying light. In a lot of sets, you have to do a fully charged heavy attack, so that's a good one. My blockade's about to run out, purifying light, combat prayer, orb, put that back down, one, two, and I'll come back and usually I'll do a fully charged heavy attack if I'm using a set, and we're going to rebuild our house a little bit early, combat prayer's down, so I'm looking down on my bottom and seeing what's coming off cooldown the fastest, heals over time, if you don't know what to do and you're running out of gas, just fully charge heavy attack, calm down and see what's going on, purifying light, let's put this down, throw an orb to maintain that, one, Two heals over time, combat prayer, circle, see what's down, blockade. Now we're gonna rebuild our house. And then when we come to the front bar, guess what? Orbs. One heal over time, combat prayer, circle. And this is it. So just like a DPS, you're doing the exact same thing as a DPS. Everyone thinks you're just AFK healing. The only difference is you gotta stop healing and hit breath of life if someone's in panic mode. Um, also, you're gonna have to build into your rotation a heavy attack on your back bar with the destruction staff, if you're using these various gear sets, I'm going to cover here in a little bit. Your priority, number one priority is to survive. So if you have to stick to a one bar and literally just using all these skills, that's a really good way to go. Throw Oak and Soul on, you can do just fine. The value added here with this bar is a heal over time with radiant regeneration, combat prayer for minor berserk, and then the orbs. That is good enough. This flex spot here, you could just do for really good healing. And then your back bar, this purifying light from the uh, minor sorcery is a must. Blockade and this overflowing altar are nice, along with these two. But you really got to keep up that minor sorcery 100% of the time if you can, because your DPS will skyrocket, especially the more magic users you got. Okay, I swear to God, we're about done. No, we're not. We got to talk about gear, and there's a gazillion things to discuss, so buckle up. Okay, uh, gear options. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my trial set on, and this is like the staple in trial set, okay? You have one person running Jorbles and Roaring Opportunist. Jorbles, while in combat, increase the duration of your major buffs, minor buffs, damage shields, you apply to yourself and allies. Okay, why would you do this? 
Well, you have Roaring Opportunist on your back bar, Inferno, Ice, Lightning, whatever. After completing the fully charged heavy attack, you and up to five group members gain Major Slayer, increasing your damage done to PvE mobs for one second for every 600 spell and Magicka you have. Roaring Opportunist can affect a target every 22 seconds. Okay, a lot of word salad there. So let's get Minor Force up. And let's, like, let's apply it here. So fully charge, you'll see a pop in my middle. Right there, bang, 16 seconds is what I have. So when you're in actual trials group and everything's rock and rolling, it's right around about, I think, 16, 17 seconds or so, depending on if there's Powerful Assault, there's Baldur of Ruin running, um, Symphony of Blades, blah, blah, blah. So that'll be a little bit extended, but it's the little red one in the bottom is what you're paying attention to. And you can see it's still on cooldown for 22, and then bang, comes up for 16. So your goal is to get as much uptime on that as possible. You'll notice with the tooltip, it says your Roaring Opportunist can only affect a target every 22 seconds. Maximum duration, 12 seconds. So Jorvals extends that maximum duration, one of the reasons why we use it. So the RO Jorvals combo makes it a lot more complicated. I have to admit I'm not the best at using it, but you have to build in to your rotation that heavy attack specifically for that reason and prioritizing that when you're under back bar to add massive damage to you and your group will set you apart from everybody else. Roaring Opportunist comes from Kynes Aegis, Nightmare to get a hold of. I just ran it on a normal bunch. Jorvals comes from Scale Caller Peak. You can run it on normal, a lot easier to get a hold of this set. So that's a trial staple number one. Typically, the way I run it is I run all Divines. Some people run Infuse in their head, chest, and all that. I don't do that. I go all Divines, all Max Magic. And then on the Jewelry pieces, you can go Arcane and Magic Recovery if you want, or you can go Spell Damage and the Atronach Mundestone. Both are good options. So either Magic Recovery and the Ritual Mundestone or Spell Damage and Atronach Mundestone are the best bet. And then uh, Traits, I go Infuse, Weapon, and Spell Damage on my back bar if I'm doing a trial. And the front bar i use masters perfected restoration staff this is from dsa and this is going to make our springs or our grand healing restore resources in both magic and stamina hence why you want to put it on the tank because stamina is really hard to get a, a back magic is not so much for the tank but this will make it a lot easier for your tank to sustain with this you can use the asylum staff if you want in this position or something else but that's why i like it here symphony of blades this is not mid max so you see it's well fitted you want divines and the right trait you could do all light if you wanted or one medium and or heavy to get a little bit more max stats but this is going to give you back a lot of resources so typically someone's going to run this or spalder of rune as a myth which we'll cover a little bit later. So that's the general premise here. Two five pieces, arena weapon on the front, and a monster helm. I know it's a lot to go over. It's on my website if you need a reference later because this is staple number one in Trials Gear. So what's staple number two? Well, I'm glad you asked there. So I'm going to throw this dungeon set up on. And this right here is Spell Power Cure. Very, very useful. It gives major courage for five seconds uh, when you overheal, meaning someone's at 100% health. There's Olamire and then there's this set. The reason a lot of healers use this is it's mobile. So you can run your heals over time and when you're moving from objective to objective or it's a mobile heal, you can maintain a lot more uptime. Where Olamire is another set that you can put down with like healing springs. The issue with it is if everyone's stacked here and there, you're not gonna give it to all of your DPS. And this comes from White Gold Tower, base game, very easy to get a hold of and what I always love to run. So then the back bar, what you're gonna run is powerful assault five piece. When you cast an assault ability while in combat, you and five group members for 10 seconds get weapon and spell damage. Um, I think it's like 300 or something quality at gold. So again, what you run is you run the jewelry since this comes in medium, and then you swap out an ability typically for echoing bigger. And then when you're on your back bar, it's built into your rotation. Your heals over time are proccing spell power cure. And then your one ability is proccing your powerful assault, like assault ability. And you also have Warhorn back there, so it also procs it. So you're trying to, you know, spam cast this a lot frequently so you can get all 12 members with this. Your tank and your healers don't really need it, but your DPS does. So it's a lot of work to maintain these buffs. And you're thinking about, do I need to do a Foy Charge Heavy op uh, for Roaring Opportunist? Do I need to keep up my uh, Vigor for this? It's more than just spamming heals. So Spell Power Cure, as long as you're keeping your heals over time rolling, this will do the trick. Now that leaves the Mythic Spalder of Rune. Typically one healer runs uh, Symphony of Blades, another one will run Spalder of Rune. 
when you sneak, you pop back up. It's basically going to activate an aura. Up to six allies are going to get weapon and spell damage, reducing your recovery for each person hit. This is extremely strong in a dungeon. So you do a little teabag, a little sneak, and you can see this big, huge area. The more people you have in the area, the less recovery that you have. So that's why you can run the Atronach Mundestone and really focus on that recovery because it will really benefit you and the group. And so then if you do the math here real quick, Spalder of Ruin is going to give 260 weapon and spell damage. This is going to give 430 and then Powerful Assault at gold quality is another 300. I'm not good at math there, but you are a powerhouse for your group. Doing all of this, your weapon's going to give resource recovery. Your abilities are going to give uh, spell damage here. You're, you're proccing status effects with blockade. You're giving minor berserk. You're giving resources with orbs. So you as a healer do not need to do puncturing sweeps and thank you're a DPS. You're providing way more for your group doing what healers do. And that's keeping high uptime on buffs. Last one up's a flex spot. I got Magma Incarnate here. There's a bunch of different monster helms that give you a 4% increase in healing done. So something like Earth Gore could be a better option. If you want pure raw healing, I focus a little bit on recovery. I do a bit of a dodge roll, so I'd rather have a little bit more recovery than a little bit more healing. But optimally, you'd probably put Earth Gore Divine's Light in that spot. And that would be your basic alternative to the other uh, Roaring Opportunist setup. But there's more. We're not done yet. Let me show you the Sweaty Dungeon set. The Sweaty Dungeon setup that I run on my back bar is exact same. I go Spalder of Rune, Spell Power Cure. Only difference is I run Master's Architect in my back bar. So when you use an ultimate while you're in combat, you're in the closest five, get Major Slayer for every ultimate spent. So essentially you can save up for a 500 ultimate and then pop it in like an arena like Black Rose Prison, Dragon Star Arena or something, or one of these veteran hard mode dungeons. And you're going to absolutely go nuclear you and your group for a very short period. So I have 250 right now, 267, 270. Let's see what it does. Bang, 26 seconds at that cost. Now, if you save up for 500, you're going to get it that much longer. So you and your group in a dungeon are going to do an enormous amount of damage. So this comes from uh, Halls of Fabrication, but it's worth collecting if you're trying to go for those trifecta uh, hard mode runs. And you can even have a tank run, Aggressive Warhorn. You can just run a barrier and pop this as well. Bunch of different options. All right, now for a beginner, what would I start with and why? So beginner setup, we're going to pull up a chart and we're going to go with Armor of Seducers. This is a craftable set. It's just simply so you don't run out of gas and run out of resource sustain. You can go a 5-1-1 setup. And the reason why 5-1-1 is relative is because you get a little bit more max stats with the Undaunted. So you're not going to die very low HP. And then you're going to go with Winter's Respite. This is a Overland set. Western Skyrim you can purchase off the traders. Casting an ability that leaves the ground. Essentially the uh, Healing Springs or Illustrious Healing is going to do a lot of healing. It just makes you a little bit better as a heal with one simple skill. And then you go with willpower weapons. They're dirt cheap. They just increases your magic. So a big increase to your magic, plus they're very easy to get. Your goal with this is to strip off the willpower training wheels. Get um, some type of dungeon trial or craftable set and work towards using a five piece on your back bar like a destruction staff. Something to work towards is hollow fang first on that back bar. When you critically hear a critical damage, it's going to do some uh, resource sustain and give minor vitality. This comes from moon gray fang. A little bit uh, painful to get a hold of, but not bad. Crag and axe hope, a good old craftable set, old cags. Decreases the time to resurrect an ally by 25%. And when you successfully res, you get magic back. So you can go to your destruction staff, someone's down, boom, pop them up real quick, especially with the CP one. And those are some of my favorites. So you get a five piece back bar set like that. That would free up an arena weapon you can do on normal and run like DSA. And then you have spell power cure on the body. If you're brand new and you don't have spell power cure, you don't want to get a hold of it. Just a beginner setup is sanctuary, increasing healing received by 10%. It can work in trials as well. So not a bad alternative. If you don't have an arena set and you want another five piece set and don't want to take off spell power cure really good option good old worm cult worm cult dungeon and this comes from vaults of madness and it grants recovery and it works in a trial so again sanctuary and worm cult give you some bow um some something to use in a trial straight off the game and it's base game very easy to get a hold of you can run it with normal not the best resource recovery set but it works pretty good and then you're gonna want to run a monster helm so symphony of blades is the the ultimate one a beginner monster helm that i would not sleep on is good old centenu 
Sentinel of Razakum or something like that. It's going to do resource recovery. It's going to go to someone randomly health and restore magic and stamina in a little pool. And then the One Piece does also have healing um, percentage done. So that's actually pretty nice. Earth Gore is kind of a sweaty PvP healer one. And that comes from Bloodroot Forge. And it basically does a big, huge burst heal. I typically like this on something like a Warden that doesn't have an oh crap, no aim burst heal. But it's not bad for doing hard mode veteran uh, dungeons or something else. And then uh, a good old heal per second set that isn't bad is Night Flame. So good old Bogdans, which I don't even have the shoulders apparently because I never use it. But it does have pretty good heals per second when other people use it on me. It's just a big AoE heal. I typically go with Symphony of Blades or something else like Sentinel, but it's not a bad option because it comes from base game Elden Hollow and extremely easy to get. That's the gear setup. So swap things in and out depending if you're doing a dungeon, you're the main healer, the off healer, or wherever you got, there's a lot of options. But pick and choose as long as you have major courage going, you're providing some resource staying. It's the staple in what healers do. So spell power cure is your number one get. And then you can get more of the sweaty back bar sets like Saxiel's Champion, Stone Talkers, Masters Architect, Roaring Opportunist. You name it, there's a gazillion out there. Another one worth mentioning real quick is uh, Martial Knowledge. This is actually a Craglorn set. And when your stamina is below 50%, your light attacks cause enemies to take 8% additional damage for 5 seconds. Again, you're going to have to dodge roll, block, or do some things to kind of trigger this or block cast. A little bit more advanced, but a lot of top end healers are using this. Okay, let's move on before I keep listing 20 more gear sets. So we're going to talk about champion points, typically what people want to know about. We're going to go to the Green Creed, just knock this out real quick, and not really that important. The one that is kind of important for PVEers is Treasure hunter just helps you get the gear sets a little bit easier gifted rider war mount steeds blessing is usually what i take here now the blue one we got a lot to talk about so there's some basic ones here the soothing tide so that's aoe swift renewal heal over time and then focus mending typically i don't run focus mending unless i'm doing like a dungeon i run rejuvenator the reason why is rejuvenator heals everything where focus mending is pretty much just like honor the dead or something so we would take that out and typically I don't use focus many outside of PvP, believe it or not. So these are the three staples that I usually go with right here. Now there's a thing that I go with is enlivening overflow. So this is just like kind of a recovery um, thing that you can use when you overheal. You're already focused on overhealing with spell power cure anyways. So those four are pretty set and forget, always gonna work for you right there. Cause focus many, not gonna work unless you're sitting there spamming honor the dead over and over. Um, if you're a beginner, uh, you can consider taking arcane supremacy, increasing your max magic and untamed aggression. Another thing as a beginner, what I do is come down into this little thing called sub constellation right here, staving death. I would take uh, 10 points into Eldritch Insight, come down here, 10 points to quick recover, and then 20 into here, 10% damage reduction. It's incredible. You'll survive a gazillion percent more. We know it sends 10, feels like 10%, but it feels like 100. So take that straight away. Work on these outside ones and then build up your champion points and go over here. So some basics over here in the fitness red tree. Boundless Vitality, Fortified, and Rejuvenator are usually what I go with. Rejuvenator is a recovery one that's on at all times. And I swap that out for Bastion. Bastion is going to increase your effectiveness of shields. So if I'm using something like Barrier frequently or another proc set or something else and I'm really focused on survival, I'll put Bastion in. But in general, I'll put this guy in here and swap him in and out depending on what I need. Spirit Mastery is another good one. So if you're expecting people to die or it's a new trial and so forth, you can pop someone up. Templars also have a passive to allow people to pop people up quicker. Also, if you're using Kagranax Hope on top of this and a Templar, you'll have basically infinite reses. So very, very good for a beginner. Now let's talk about racial choices. So I would highly recommend a Breton typically for people. Breton has the best all-around magic resource sustain period this guy's a pvp healer that's why i'm an argoni i think it's the second best argoni has increased healing max health disease and poison and a little bit of max magic and stamina it has a unique passive for restoring all of your stats when you drink a potion so that equates to some decent magic recovery but the breton is just all out I just love the look of the Argoni and they've been a staple for healers for day one in ESO. So it's a second recommendation. Don't freak out about the uh, racial choice. I've healed at a high level on a Dunmer. It really doesn't matter. You just have to adjust your build and gear a little bit differently. 
Speaking of that, let's talk about that. Attribute points. So I am below what I usually run, 19,000. So I usually recommend about 22,000 to 23,000 for the average healer. The reason why, if you make a mistake or screw up, you're not gonna die instantly. You will die instantly if you're down about 18,000, you're running a uh, Parsu, which I'm running, but I'm decently experienced on this guy, so that's why I run that. So right around 22,000 if you can. If you can hit about 2,000 to 2,200 magic recovery while you're buffed, that's great. So I just happen to be at 64. If you're a Breton, don't have a health bonus, you might be a little bit different. So I'm using Parsu. Ghastly Eyeball, good old Ghastly Eyeball. So it doesn't have a line of health in it, it just has max magic and recovery. Consider this your go-to for pure healing, but you will not be able to recover if you make a mistake. An expensive version of this that's a little bit safer, that has a little bit less recovery is Clockwork Citrus Flay. Very, very good because you'll be at about 22, 23,000 health. If you can't afford that, a cheaper version of it is Witch Mother's Potent Brew. So too long, didn't read. Aim for 22,000. If you're starting to do really well, you can go with the Parsuit, but be careful about it. And now we get to the Munda Stone. So a couple different Munda Stone of choice. The Ritual is the best for pure healing. But there's a choice you need to make. You need to either run the Ritual or the Atronach Munda Stone. The Ritual is good if you have all recovery glyphs on your jewelry. The Atronach is good if you have all spell damage on your jewelry. I've tested them both and I've spent a gazillion glyphs trying to test out which is better and what. A lot of people say the Atronach with uh, spell damage glyphs is the best. I don't know the math on it. I stick with ritual recovery. That seems to work well for me. Well, gang, that is a healer build. I hope you learned a lot. Spent a lot of time on this and uh, healing in both veteran trials and a new trial specifically. Black Rose Prison, all sorts of the hard mode dungeons. I really like healing i think it's a lot more active than people think like oh you're spamming breath of life one button no you're really not and there's some healers that just put me to shame out there with super high uptimes especially like gear sets like rowing opportunists which i'm not that familiar with so i have a lot of room to grow as a healer as well but it's a lot of fun and challenging trying to see how uh, much uptime you can obtain and when you're in a group and people are like my god my dps is high that is a feeling that is really worth having as a as a pve healer because people want to be you know the big huge dps maniac out there but you as a healer contribute to that because not everyone can parse really high in a trial unless the healers and the tanks are super coordinated and everyone's rocking the meta buffs so if you got something out of this please smash that thumbs up tell me in the comments specifically what you got out of this and also consider supporting me on patreon there's a link in the description this really helps me out cranking out more and more videos so consider doing that if you like this type of video and have a little bit of extra money to spare and until next time thanks for watching